Everybody, I'm so grateful you're joining me today. I've I've asked a good friend of mine, Jeff, to to be on with the with me today to talk about some things that that I think affect you and will impact your life as you're looking to protect your financial plan. And so, so Jeff is a a, a veteran financial advisor and and he specializes in a few specific products that we're going to talk about today. And I've asked Jeff to to join me on the show today or join me in 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 this recording so that uh, we can provide you with some more information on some of the things that are out there. That, that will help you to live better in retirement and help you to protect your retirement plan. I know for, for most of us, we tend to focus on what we do, right? Uh, whether we're a school teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever, we do what we do and what everybody else does just kind of seems confusing. And this is especially true when it comes to financial products. And so that's why I've asked Jeff to jump on with us and, and clarify some of these things to, to give you some understanding on that. And so Jeff, thanks again for being with me today. Um, let's, uh, let's give you a few minutes. You can introduce yourself and tell us all who you are and, and where you come from. Very good. Excellent. So, um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Right, let's, let's start there. And, uh, I think that the, um, you know, the video will tell a story, uh, that I am not a traditional, uh, financial advisor. Most of those guys right now would be wearing a three piece suit, um, <laughs> very stuffy. So it's going to be a lot more loose than that. Uh, today. So I hope hopefully they um, get two things out of it. One, they're able to enjoy a good dialogue between a couple guys who uh, really enjoy what they do. And and I think number two is uh, hopefully they, they garner some value from what I'm about to say as well. Um, so I have a background in um, mortgage financing as well. So that's, I think, something that we share in common. Um, yeah. And now uh, an advisor in the financial business since 2008 to 2009, I'd say got licenses in, in 08. And then, uh, much like anything else, it took a little while to, to get the wheels turning, right? Um, that's about so, the time. So yeah, I say that's about the time I got into mortgages. It's uh, it was a challenging time to gen to join our industries. So, for sure, and and it was uh, an interesting time because that's usually the question: Why did you ever leave the mortgage industry? I said, Well, the the market helped me with my decision. <laughs> you know? Oh, good. Well, wonderful. Well, uh, let's uh, let's dive right into this. I want to give you plenty of time today to to kind of tell us, um, you know, as I mentioned in the opening, there are so many financial products out there, and it just becomes really overwhelming and confusing. And and so when I talk to my clients and we talk about the assets they have and how they're going to protect them and what they should buy or what they should, you know, not buy those kinds of things, um, it's it's just very overwhelming, especially for somebody who does not know the industry. And so um, why don't you kind of lead in now and, and tell us a little bit more about the things that, that you'd like to highlight for us? Most definitely. I, I Well, I like to highlight first, and I know we talked about it a little bit, um, because you have, a, it's a very valid point that you made in that, uh, we all know what we know. Um, sometimes, uh, we don't know what we don't know. And a lot of times, sometimes what we think we know just ain't so. Have you ever heard that before? No, for sure. Uh, so I, I find, and, you know, obviously we, we speak to people inside of industries that touch ours quite frequently based on what we do, but I find that, um, sometimes I'll have conversations with folks and they'll say, oh, it's that's opposite what I heard from my CPA. And I'll, and I'll give you a good example of that. Um, many times, and I think you'd agree because I, obviously you interact with CPAs quite a bit, their job, and by the way, uh, kudos to them, their job is to save us taxes, yes? Yeah, exactly. Okay, in fact, I'll go one step further and I'll tell you that if my CPA doesn't save me taxes, he's probably not getting a check this year, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's his job and they, and they understand that. They usually do a good job of it. The problem is that um, a lot of times, not for everybody, but they're, they're dealing with things on a year to year basis with the average American, right? Uh, the average family. And, and sometimes paying more taxes today saves you a lot of taxes on the back end with some of the products uh, and vehicles we're working with in the financial business. Interesting. And for some people, that's a tough pill to swallow. And yeah. I'd say for the CPA, it's a really difficult conversation to have. Hey, you know, you could have a lower tax basis this year, therefore get a larger tax return, or you could actually pay some more taxes this year because in, in the future, that would be better for you. So that's a, that's a tough conversation, I think, to have. So that being said, yeah. It's a fascinating topic. It's a fascinating topic because I think uh, in general, people love the kick the can down the road mentality. You know, they don't want to see what the consequences are. They're just going to assume it's going to work out. But uh, it's a true testament to 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 professional advising that that we want to look at your life both today and 
20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. We want to look at the whole picture to make sure we're doing the best thing for you. Most definitely. Most definitely. And um, and that's why I've enjoyed our conversations so far, uh, all the conversations that we have had. And um, so I think um, moving from there and it just kind of giving people a little bit of an understanding, uh, I think we've been driven in the financial business, and Trevor, I think you'd agree, that people for the most part are buying uh, products based on the, this promise of this rate of return, right? And uh, and that's that tends to be what drives people. Would you agree with that statement? Oh, well, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, I, and not that that's not important, but I, I like to call that the the motor that we're sold. <clears throat> and and I don't know about you, but if I'm buying a boat, I'm not buying the little motor. I'm I'm getting the big motor. Sure. <laughs> I think I'm about to learn something. Did you would you buy the big motor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, because we are sold that, but the, the problem is we're, we're not told is when they strap that big motor on the back of the boat and we get out in the middle of the lake, if they didn't disclose the fact that this particular boat has a lot of holes in it, I don't think that the size of the motor now matters to the fact that we're probably going to sink anyways. Agreeable? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So what we find our process is, is to actually, rather than focusing on necessarily the rate of return or the size of the motor up front, I think the bigger part of the equation is to actually go through people's financial uh, situation, their circumstances, and to slowly start plugging in those holes in the boat. And some of those holes would be paying too much taxes, losses in the market. And I think a lot of people are going to be nodding along with that right now, right? right the way now, the market sure. is. Inflation, which is a very big word right now. I think people, uh, you talk about that for the last five years, people will nod along when you say it. But I think now when people are leaving the grocery store, with two bags in their hands and they're paying $100 where that just didn't used to feel that way. People are connecting with that more today. Um, you know, market timing, all of these things are, are holes that they're dealing with in the boat. And, and if we can go through and do a good job of that, well, now we can start focusing on talking about products, talking about rate of return and so forth. And I think it's a little bit more responsible to do it that way because it's traditionally not done that way as crazy as that sounds. For sure. Yeah. I love the I love the visualization you give there, and I, I I saw that you use this analogy quite a bit on your social media, where where you're talking about plugging the holes in the boat because it's such an accurate description of what retirement feels like for most people today, right? Feels like we're just slowly sinking, and we're just hoping that that um, you know we don't run out of money before we die, right? And it's such a hard way to live, and so it's a it's a really good analogy for for the way people. Uh, you know, live and feel in retirement. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's a, that's actually a great lead in for some of the products that we have today at our disposal. Um, not that I want to be, have people get the idea that, you know, we're all product centric, but mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, your money goes somewhere, right. And, sure. and it's going to be a product and they're built today around um, a lot of uh, correcting a lot of the misnomers or the things that had happened in the past around, I'm going to use a bad word, annuities, for example. Sure. Right. And, uh, and I think that they're becoming a little bit more popular than they were. It's a little bit of an easier conversation approach today than it would have been five years ago, or even uh, further back. And the reason is because I think people for the most part, and Trevor, I'm sure you look at financial statements all the time, and you're dealing with, uh, you know, people's cash flow and retirement conversations, but people used to have things called pension plans. Right. So they were they were attracted in to go work for a particular company based on the fact that the company made an agreement. And it was, hey, Trevor, you give me 25 or 30 years of your life and then I'll pay you for the rest of yours. Right. Which seemed like a pretty good deal as sure. opposed to those companies realizing that a couple of things happened since pension plans came out at the end of World War II. A couple of things. You know, a lot of things have happened. But number one, people are living a lot longer. Yeah. Right? And companies are realizing they just cannot hold on and they cannot continue to fund those pension plans. Yeah. So those were replaced by qualified retirement plans, right? like 401ks and 403bs, which now puts the onus of retirement savings back onto the employee for the most part. Yeah. Okay. I just don't remember the, anybody coming on the news and announcing that shift. Right. We used to take care of your retirement, not so much anymore. But now to have that dialogue with somebody and say, look, those old... 401ks, the IRAs, some of the things that are sitting out there today that you do have, you can actually transition those and roll those into plans that have annuities inside. What's the importance of that? Well, a couple of things. One, we get to plug some of those holes in the boat, right? right? We get to, with the right type of annuity product, we get to stop for market risk. 
You don't have to take the losses when the market falls. You can make money when the market comes up and it locks in and that becomes your new principle. I think that's super important. But the most important part is I can tell somebody right now with an illustration based on their age and how much money is going into the product, annuity specifically, exactly how much money they'll be able to spend from that annuity every single month for the rest of their life to the penny. It's wow. not, it's not yeah. if the moon and stars are in alignment, if the market does well, a lot of ifs, it is literally, this is the number. Right. Oh, I love that. Then, and, and, you know, an analogy that I use with my clients a lot of times that, that comes up for me as I'm, as I'm listening to you explain this is if, if I had a heart attack today and I need surgery immediately, I don't go to my family practitioner for advice, right? I go to a cardiovascular surgeon, right? A guy that's done 10,000 of the surgeries that I need. Um, and, and that, you know, talking about annuity specifically, if, if you go to your, your brother-in-law that dabbles in financial planning, right. he's not going to understand it. Right. And right. so it's, it's key, whether it's uh, this 401ks or anything else that I, I think that illustrates the point that you've got to talk to somebody who does a lot of these, who knows how to structure them and plan them in a way that, that, that will help it to, to perform well for you. I, I would have, well, I would definitely agree with that statement, but. Uh, I would assume people would, would hope that I would agree with that statement. But, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I think more importantly, too, and, and folks need to understand where there's so much. And I know in, in, in the mortgage business, there's just so much to sift through when it comes down to products and, and so forth. And it is important why people would work with an advisor such as yourself for what, for what you do. Um, but it's the important part is to be able for us to sift through all of these products and start to really fit something that's going to actually work for somebody. Yeah. Right. And I think one of the biggest questions people have, and they're probably already thinking about it is, yeah, but I've heard with annuities, you give them this money and then they'll start paying you. And then if God forbid you, you die or you pass away young, they just keep, they just keep your money. Right. And uh, I can't tell you at one point that was true. Uh, it is not true anymore. However, the oh, rest, great. the balance of the money actually goes um, as a death benefit to your beneficiaries. And if set up correctly, outside of probate. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. I had no idea. That's news to me. That's really cool. I didn't know that was possible. Keywords being, if set up correctly. If set up correctly. Right. Wow, fascinating. Well, this has been really helpful, Jeff. I, I One thing that I just want to say to, to everybody that's listening, you know, I, I <clears throat> as I've gotten to know Jeff, one thing that I can say is, as he mentioned a little bit earlier, it's not about what we think is right for our clients. It's about what is right for our clients. And so as, you know, I know as, as Jeff counsels with, uh, with, with, uh, with his clients and, and the people that, um, that he serves, that he's doing what's right for them. He's helping them to find the, 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 the those things that will help them to, to live a better life. And so Jeff, before we, we bring this to an end, I'm, I'm just wondering, is there, are there any questions that I should have asked that I have not? Is there anything else that you feel um, my clients need to hear from you that would be benefit to them? Um, I, I would think that some of the most important things to say, if I, if I was given just a minute to say it is um, most of the people that know folks in their lives who have done really well financially, the one question I always ask people is, do you think that they make emotion, emotional decisions around money? Right. And I, they typically go, well, no, I don't think that they do. And I, I would say, so how many people uh, here, if I'm speaking at the front of a room, for example, have made emotional decisions? I'll put my, I'll put my hand right up, right? Because we all okay. do. Um, and so I just say, does it make more sense maybe than to have some sort of a system in place, sort of filters that you would make decisions around with money? And a lot of times those filters are very simple. Now, and if it's okay with you, I'll just tell people what they are. Yeah, very that's simple, great. Mm -hmm. Right? So does your product that you have your money in meet these specific requirements? Number one is liquidity. Do you have access to the money without penalty? Right? Number two is, is it protected against loss? Okay. Are you going to lose money and how much and how much of that money are you willing to lose? Right. Based on how far you are away from retirement. Okay. Rate of return. Is there a decent rate of return? That's a big question. But the one thing I will say is if it's not outpacing inflation on average, you're going backwards, okay? 
And then the last thing is, how will this money be taxed in the future? Okay, so I would be asking myself those questions about accounts that you have. And the more of those boxes that it checks for you, the better off that you are. And it also gives you a great framework for questions to go back and ask your existing advisor as well. I love that. Well, perfect. Well, um, to everybody that's listening again, if you, you know, it's, it's hard for us to cover everything in this brief of a, of a setting. Uh, but I hope that the, that this has raised some questions that you need to be asking yourself and, and whether or not you've explored all of the options that are available to you, because again, there are things out there that could really help you to live better. And so, um, get in touch with me, uh, send me an email, give me a call, shoot me a text. I would love to connect you directly with Jeff and he'll look at your situation. Jeff, any other things that uh, any, how can people connect with you online? Uh, social media, email, how can they reach out to you directly? It is amazing how 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 connected we are today. I'm, you can find me on Instagram. I'm on uh, Solve for X Financial on Instagram or any of the socials. You can find me at Solve for X Financial. Um, and you can find me at Jeff at solve for X financial.com. Perfect. Solve for X financial. I love it. All right. Well, thank you again, Jeff, for your time today. And I, uh, hopefully we'll be talking again soon. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks guys.